طبط عوف In what is now considered a monumental moment in the history of Israeli-Iranian tensions, Iran has delivered a retaliatory blow to the Israeli military in a move that may fundamentally alter the dynamics of the Middle East. This attack was spurred by the assassinations of key resistance figures, including Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah and Palestinian politician Ismail Haniyeh. Nasrallah was reportedly killed in a deep bunker when a barrage of bunker-busting bombs targeted his location, while Haniyeh was said to have been assassinated in a private residence in Tehran, a strike that shocked Iran and raised concerns about the safety of even high-profile guests within its capital. Iran's response came swiftly and decisively. A wave of missiles rained down on multiple Israeli air bases across occupied Palestine, overwhelming the Iron Dome defense system. While the Israeli government claimed a large number of missiles were intercepted, unverified videos circulating on social media told a different story, showing missiles hitting their targets with devastating precision. According to reports, as many as 20 advanced fighter jets, including F-35s and F-15s, were destroyed in the strikes, with significant damage inflicted on the Tefnof airbase near Tel Aviv. In several Middle Eastern capitals, particularly in Baghdad, the West Bank and Jordan, celebrations erupted in the streets as news of the attack spread, with Palestinians hailing it as one of the most significant Iran blows against Israel attack. in decades. With over 180 ballistic missiles directly from Iranian soil at the State of Israel. There were a small number of hits in the center of Israel and some other hits in the southern Israel. The IDF, the known the for its confident press releases, seemed shaken by, by the sheer scale of the attack. Rear the Admiral States. Daniel Hagari, the Iran's spokesperson for the IDF, appeared visibly unsettled as he addressed the press. He claimed that the Iron Our Dome had largely intercepted the missiles. Iran's attack is a severe and dangerous escalation. There will be consequences. Our defensive and offensive capabilities are at the highest levels of readiness. Our operational plans are ready. We will respond wherever, whenever, and however we choose, in accordance with the directive of the government of Israel. Iran and its proxies have been attacking Israel since the 7th of October on seven fronts, Iran and its proxies seek the destruction of Israel. However, Israel the evidence presented by uncensored footage disagree with Hagari. Critical military infrastructure was targeted and, and the destruction the was undeniable, putting Israel on high alert for further retaliatory strikes. طبط عوف طبطوا <تصفيق> 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 
طبط عوف This evening, Iran once again launched an attack on Israel with dozens of missiles, but the attack failed. It was thwarted thanks to Israel air defense system, which is the most advanced in the world. And I would like to congratulate the IDF for this impressive achievement. It was also thwarted thanks to the responsibility and alertness displayed by you, citizens of Israel. I wish to also thank the U.S. for its support of our defensive effort. Iran made a major mistake this evening, and it will pay for it. The regime in Iran just doesn't understand understand our determination to defend ourselves and our determination to retaliate to our enemies. Sinwar and Def did not understand that, Nasrallah and Mohsen did not understand that, and I guess there are those who do not understand that in Tehran, but they will. We are going to adhere to the rule that we set for ourselves. Those who attack us, we attack them. And that's true wherever we fight, when we fight the axis of evil. It's true for Judea and Samaria, it's true for Gaza for Lebanon, for Yemen, Syria, and it's also true for Iran. The Iranian government made its stance clear, warning Israel that any further response would result in even more devastating consequences. Iran's supreme leader has framed this strike not just as a military operation, but as a message of solidarity with the Palestinian cause, reinforcing Iran's role as a central force in the resistance to Israeli occupation. Tehran's resolve has only deepened in the face of what it sees as an existential struggle against Western-backed Israeli aggression. Additionally, no U.S. personnel... Meanwhile, Pentagon scrambled to downplay its knowledge of the attack, with Pentagon spokesman General Patrick Ryder claiming that American forces had assisted in intercepting some of the missiles, but failed to specify how many. Ryder's tone suggested a degree of discomfort, as if the scale of the attack had caught U.S. intelligence by surprise. The Pentagon's response reflects the deepening complexity of U.S. involvement in the region, where it must navigate its commitment to Israeli security while also managing its broader geopolitical interests. To be crystal clear, as Secretary Austin has said, should Iran, its partners or its proxies use this moment to target American personnel or interests in the region, the United States will take every necessary measure to defend our people. 
And separately, I do have an update to provide on DOD support to Hurricane uh, Helene response efforts, but I'll provide that at the end. Uh, with that, happy to take your questions. We'll start with AP, Tara. Thanks, General Ryder. Um, what Navy destroyers were involved in helping shoot down an intercept? And given this escalation, um, what's being communicated between Secretary Austin and Minister Gallant right now in terms of tampering things down and potentially avoiding a wider war? Um, so the, the two Navy destroyers involved were the USS um, Volkley and the USS Cole. Uh, in terms of the, the conversations between mm -hmm. Secretary Austin and Minister Gallant, you know, I won't get into uh, you know, the, the <coughs> private discussions other than to say uh, we are consulting closely with them on next steps uh, and the continued defense of Israel. And then are there any plans underway to conduct a NEO given the increased uh, risk of a wider war? Um, right now, uh, there, there has been no order to evacuate. Uh, as you've heard us say before, we are a planning organization, so we, of course, plan for all contingencies. Uh, but as of right now, uh, State Department has not called for an evacuation. Jennifer. In Washington, reactions were swift and divided. Former President Donald Trump took to his Truth Social platform to denounce the Biden administration, claiming that such a crisis would never have occurred under his leadership. Trump's comments were not isolated. Many Republican lawmakers echoed his sentiment, calling for immediate action against Iran, with some suggesting that Israel should seize this moment to strike Iranian nuclear facilities. The former Israeli Prime Minister, Naftali Bennett, went even further, suggesting that this retaliation had provided Israel with its greatest strategic opportunity in decades. According to Bennett, Iran's leadership, long revered for its geopolitical prowess, had made a critical error, one that could allow Israel to dismantle Iran's nuclear program and cripple its energy infrastructure. The notion of targeting Iran at this critical juncture reveals Israel's broader geopolitical calculus. With Hamas, Hezbollah, and other Iranian-backed proxies seen as weakened, Israeli officials believe the time is ripe to neutralize Iran's regional influence. There is a prevailing sense that this moment, more than any other in recent history, offers Israel the chance to reshape the power balance in the Middle East. But beyond the immediate military considerations, there are deeper political and social undercurrents at play. Some Israeli and Western leaders are emphasizing the possibility of leveraging this situation to destabilize the Iranian regime itself. For years, Iran has been accused of suppressing its population, particularly women and minority groups, and the idea of encouraging an internal uprising against the regime has gained traction in certain circles. By striking a decisive blow against Iran's military and economic infrastructure, some argue Israel could pave the way for an uprising that could unseat the current leadership. However, such a strategy is fraught with peril. Iran is no stranger to external pressure and has, over the years, developed a sophisticated network of alliances and proxies throughout the region. Any direct action against Iran risks escalating into a wider regional conflict that could draw in multiple actors, from Hezbollah in Lebanon to Iranian-backed militias in Iraq and Yemen. Furthermore, Iran's retaliatory capabilities should not be underestimated. It possesses a significant arsenal of ballistic missiles and has demonstrated its ability to coordinate attacks with precision. This unfolding crisis underscores the fragility of the current Middle Eastern geopolitical landscape. The assassination of Nasrallah and Haniyeh, both of whom represented significant resistance to Israeli occupation, has set off a chain reaction that could reshape the region for years to come. The jubilation in Arab capitals reflects a broader sentiment that Israel, long seen as an indomitable military power, is now vulnerable to sophisticated, well-coordinated attacks from its adversaries.